I'm Denise Seidel and I'm the owner of snobstuff.com and this is my home here in Toronto which I built from scratch. So we bought the house in a hurry, actually I bought the house without my husband ever seeing it. When I told him I bought the house he was very excited because he knew I wanted to build a home. The important part of building this house was that I really knew that I did not want to live in a condo and I wanted to build a home that would carry our family for the next 20 to 30 years for my husband and myself and my children when they come home from college or if they want to use it later in life. I love cooking actually. I think it's part of my personality, you know, creative side. I love cooking. I'm a terrible baker. The kitchen was very important that it looked very elegant but also calm because it was also the hub of the home as well as being the dining room open living space. I'd never actually experienced living in a home with an open living space so it was very new to me. So I was very clear that I did not want upper cabinets in my kitchen because it would make it feel more like a kitchen. So I steered away from that and I have a walk-in area or kind of pantry, scullery, whatever you want to call it. And that's where I keep my toaster oven and my bread bin and my kettle. So it looked more like an elegant dining room slash kitchen and I was very happy with that result. The dining room table was made by a friend of mine in South Africa. He was a very well-known craftsman who I knew as a little girl. My parents would tout his name in Cape Town and say, oh, that was a table made by Pierre Cognier. Even though he was very traditional in his design, I spoke to him and we designed it and we worked on it together to get the table that I really, really loved. I had very big walls in this house. That's one of the challenges of having a big, long house here in Toronto. I was getting a little desperate and I'd spent a lot of money on the home and I needed to be a little bit more economical. So I thought, I'm going to paint something. And within an afternoon I was painting and actually it really woke me up. I found a new sidekick to my life that I really wanted to explore. So I enjoyed doing it. So that's my living room. You will notice that the chairs are not slouchy chairs with big puffy pillows. Comfortable enough to sit on but not to lie down and that you can have really good conversations and socialize in that room. That's why you have this very long sofa, big art and a nice fireplace and very little pillows. One of the things that I really knew about myself was that I always wanted to live in color. I am not a beige or a blonde kind of person. I like color wherever I go. So this is what we would call the family room or the TV room as my husband would say. It's a happy room. It's, you know, it's got all my little things from all over the world put into it. Everything has a little bit of meaning and a little bit of provenance and a little bit of a story. And this is a Mitchell Gold chaise from 25 years ago. So I've had it for a very long time, just recovered in a very inexpensive fabric. My coffee table was one of the first pieces I purchased when I went back to South Africa maybe 15 years ago on a holiday. All those pieces in that orange cabinet are all pieces that I've collected on my travels. So everything has something that relates to where I was at the time. So many times I read in magazines or watch on TV that your bedroom has to feel like a hotel. Mine's the opposite. <laughs> I spend many, many hours and nights in hotels. And I wanted to have a room that I came home to that I felt the same feeling I feel everywhere, which is that happy, colorful feeling. And I'm happier. I'm happier with all the things around me, with the color. For me, that is very comfortable. I'm a very big believer in every home needs something from Ikea, and there's lots of it in this house. My bedroom cupboards are all from Ikea, but I knew I didn't want the Ikea look. I liked doing bronze metal work, so I bought large sheets of metal, and I hand bronzed them myself and then clad them onto the cupboard doors so they have a completely different look. Nobody would know it, it's sort of my little secret, but I always love showing off and saying, these are my IKEA cabinets, now look at them. There's also an office off the bedroom, and that came about because in my younger years, when I used to go traveling, I would come back and I would be on different time zones, and I would have teenage children sleeping in the house who did not want to be woken up with me yapping on the phone at four o'clock in the morning. So I built an office in my bedroom and then realized that I had a husband who didn't want to hear me yapping either. <laughs> so <laughs> I still love having my own separate office. So the surfaces in this house were very important for me. Although I love marble and I love granite and I love stone, I believe they should be in objects and not on surfaces for me because I need to live in my home. So my bathroom has porcelain walls in the shower. I didn't want grout lines to clean. The floors are porcelain, they are not marble. 
My countertops in my bathrooms and in my kitchens are all Korean. I did not want to be always looking after them or upgrading them or keeping them looking sparkling. So my daughter's bedroom needed a bit of drama. So her room has black grass cloth wallpaper. It's the only room in the whole house where I changed the color of the walls. And um, I actually love it. I think it's a nice surprise to have somewhere. It's not something I would put in my whole home, but for me personally, I loved it. So my son is a mini version of me. <laughs> he is very much my style and taste. At the beginning of the project, he says, I don't care what you do to my room, you can do what you like. And then suddenly showed up and was involved in everything. And he's very into art and design and color, just like me. And he actually did his room. So there's this bird on the perch everyone asks about. I actually bought it at Of Things Past when they first opened. It was lying in a corner somewhere and I brought it home and everyone thought, here comes wacky mom again. But that is really what I like about my home. I can speak about every object. You don't have to like it, you don't have to love it, you can hate it, but at least you can talk about it. Because my house sort of has a very colorful theme, I can move things around. Sometimes I'll be walking into a living room and say, no, I don't want that there today, I want it somewhere else. My house is not precious, that's very important. I want it to be a home. Show up, kick your feet up and enjoy yourself.